renowned Egyptian archaeologist, Dr. Carter Howard from Arizona, is frantically searching for artifacts that will shine some new information that will lead him to the hidden tomb of a pharaoh whose rule was obscure and purposely hidden from history. He believes the boy king named King Kutz Karutz Amun was once an all-powerful ruler with a story of intrigue, mystery, and possibly murder. Here, Dr. Howard is working with his international team to excavate more evidence of the pharaoh that lived in the Old Kingdom approximately 3000 BC. Searching near the Giza Plateau, near the city of Saqqara, one can find the Great Pyramids. Perhaps there is a hidden pyramid of the boy king. I do believe we are in the correct area to find solid evidence of the mysterious pharaoh we have dubbed King Cut. Using hieroglyphics from a canopic jar I found near the first cataract of the Nile River. I have hypothesized that this may be indeed the final resting place of the legendary boy king. You found something! Eureka! Indeed, his team has uncovered a stone tablet with written hieroglyphics detailing the life of the pharaoh Kutz Karut Amun, which we hope will help Dr. Howard pinpoint the location of his burial chamber. From the University of Arizona, Physicist Dr. Heinrich von Farsight claims to have created a time portal that will allow him to travel into the past. Time machine. You can go anywhere into time at all. Into forward into the future or backwards into the past. Here is a rock that he claims was brought back in the Triassic period. Perhaps you were looking at the same rock a dinosaur walked on. Our movie news cameraman traveled with Victor Heinrich von Farsight and took this amazing footage to show that actually does work. Dr. Carter Howard and Heinrich von Farsight have announced that they will join together to travel back to the past to see firsthand the life of the mysterious pharaoh, King Gerutz Amun. Here, Howard and Farsight and our courageous cameraman enter the time portal to 3042 BC, over 5,000 years in the past. The ancient Nile River was a lifeline for all life, providing a food source, travel for trading, and giving scribes their valuable papyrus to write on. Papyrus grows very well on the Nile and is a reed plant that grows in marshy areas. Inside of the triangular stuck was cut or peeled into long strips. These strips were then laid out in two layers, one horizontal and one vertical and pressed and dried to form a papyrus sheet. Finally, many of these sheets were joined end to end to form a roll. No glue was required. Instead, the natural gum of the plant helped the sheets together. A roll was usually about one foot in height and could be up to 100 feet in length. It is a long and tedious process, but it left rare information about the unique society. Our alphabet has 26 letters, but the Egyptians had to remember over 2,000 hieroglyphic characters. Each of these hieroglyphics represented a sound, object, or an idea. It describes many years to learn to write. Scribes are special people who learned how to read and write. The scribes also made sure to write the pharaoh's name as many times as they could because it helped them live in the afterlife. Egyptians wrote in this picture typewriting until about 400 AD and was forgotten until about 1799 AD when a big black stone was discovered in Rosetta, Egypt.
The Rosetta Stone was written in three languages. Egyptian hieroglyphics, demonic, which was a shorthand cursive, and Greek. Since people knew how to read Greek and demonic, a scientist named Jean Francis Champion cracked the mystery. And lucky for Dr. Howard, he can write a question to this Egyptian scribe. He asked, where is the pharaoh? This friendly and helpful scribe will happily direct us to the way to King Kutz Karut Amun. Coming up to the pharaoh's palace, we can see that he is a well-respected individual. Statues are made in his likeness of the king, and is believed by all to be the son of the god Ra, the sun god. The pharaoh is believed to have power over everything. Subjects bow down to the king. People cannot even say his name. Howard and Farsight have been granted permission to see the young pharaoh himself. They find himself in awe of the lavish and expensive statues and furniture that the pharaoh demands. This is the moment that Howard and Farsight have been waiting for, to meet face to face with the legendary King Kutz Pharaoh Amun. Pharaoh is happy to meet these strange foreigners and believes that they are gods to help him. He is eager to show him his construction of his magnificent pyramid that was started many years ago to be ready for his death and rebirth of the afterlife. Pharaoh shows him the simple mastabas, which were the first burial places for the kings. They were simple square rooms. A pharaoh Zolzer's aide named Imhotep helped him design a larger step pyramid and eventually designers smoothed out the edges to form the pyramids. King Kutkir Amun points out the workers, all gladly helping him build his great pyramid. They are happy, he says, because their crops are finished planting and they needed extra work so they are glad to be helping their god and king. News flash! The pharaoh was found murdered in his bedchambers this morning. Could it be a conspiracy? The pharaoh was loved by his loyal subjects, but some have been known to murder a king in order to break his dynasty or order for their lineage to become pharaoh. The body is specially prepared by a priest, sometimes dressed up as the god Anubis, the jekyll-headed god who watched over the dead. The Egyptians believe that it is necessary to preserve a body in order to allow the soul to survive. Egyptian embalming methods involved cutting the left side of the body open to take out the internal organs and put it in canopic jars. The brain was removed by inserting a special hooked instrument through the nostrils in order to pull out bits of the brain tissue and then discard it. It is a very delicate operation which could easily disfigure the face if they weren't careful. They left only the heart in the body, believing to be the center of a person's being and intelligence. Next, the body was immersed in nature and salt, and the cavities were filled with a mixture of herbs, salt, and other substances. Next came the wrapping of the mummy. Every part of the body was wrapped individually. The hands, head, arms, feet, legs, were all wrapped separately from the rest of the body. Each mummy needed hundreds of yards of linen. The mummification process took 70 days. He is then placed into a sarcophagus and looked forward to living in the afterlife. Some historians estimate that by AD 700, when the practice had died out, the Egyptians had embalmed approximately 730 million bodies. Pharaoh Kutker Amun is now being placed in the very pyramid they started years ago. It is a good thing because it is needed to keep him safe for the afterlife. Because of the turmoil that is soon to follow, our famous scientists sadly leave the past to return to the present to bring back their scientific findings, bringing back with them priceless artifacts once lost to the sands of time now on display at the Arizona Museum of Egyptian Artifacts. Come see for yourself these priceless treasures or make an appointment with Dr. Farsight's time travel agency.
get okay. a little wetter. Okay, take moo, shoo. Shoo. No. I said I'm not ready. Shut that thing off. Go, go, go John. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Things are recording. I can't do the rap tape. This is a screen test for Dr. Howard, okay? Okay. All of you, try it. I need a hand model. Hand model? Yeah. Can I see your hands? Okay, pretend you're carrots. Okay, I, I think you flunked your screen test. Yeah, screen test, come on. Oh, gross, you're sharing the same t oh. Of his burial chamber. Where's my coffee? Sorry. Holy oh, wow. Yay, yeah, I like really goes bolder. No. Oh, really bolder. That's real nice. Okay, yeah. <laughs> now I want you to do is turn around slowly. Okay, and now... <laughs> okay, stop. Personal and one vertical. Then press and dry to form a papyrus sheet. 